I want to talk about some college stats with Odafe Owe to start off this video. You might remember it was a big deal about uh, the guy who was then known as Jason Owe uh, and the fact that he didn't have a single sack in his last season in, at the college level. But you look at these numbers and they're a lot better than the sack numbers, part of why sacks is not a great statistic. These are going to be his, you know, uh, PFF grades, along with other stuff, including pass rush win rate and run stop rate, and where the percentiles rank among the rest of college football. So this is, again, 2020, his last season at the college level. Uh, you see his pass rush grade was fine at 80.3. Not great, not horrible either. Uh, but the run defense grade was really good at uh, 89.7. Uh, you know, again, a solid pass rush win rate at 16.6. .6. Not fantastic, but again, solid. Uh, and did do a lot better when he was in a true pass uh, set, pass rush grade. That was very good. Run stop rate, also very good. So these numbers do a much better job at, you look at these numbers, and they translate to the next level a lot better than, say, sacks do. Sacks don't matter. Okay, not that sacks don't matter. Sacks do have a lot of value. There's a lot of good in sacks. Just there's a lot of uh, randomness with it, which kind of makes the stat itself not very valuable, even though, you know, the goal of an edge rusher a lot of times is to get as many sacks as possible. Let's watch some film and talk about kind of what Owe does so well, not just in the pass rush game, because he was a quality pass rusher, but also just as a defensive end in general, or edge rusher, I should say, uh, in general. And one thing you're going to see is what's going to happen on this play, where it's going to be a twist, which means that you have an interior defensive lineman who's going to be running to the right guard's right, kind of causing him to go in that direction, and hopefully Owe can swing around. He's the one who I've circled in black there. Uh, and, you know, there might be a gap in between the center and right guard. And because he's such a good athlete, he might be able to get through there and get relatively untouched. And as you see, watch how this play is going to work out pretty well. It was well ran by, you know, both Baltimore players doing that. And also, I think that you could argue that the Raiders could have done a better job of reading it quickly. But at the same time, they would have had to read it really quickly because Owe did such a good job at being explosive enough to get through that gap quickly. And this is a big thing that the Ravens like to do and something that, you know, part of why they drafted him, I'm sure, is because he can be good at this stuff. As you see, he does run in and he is going to be able to create a pressure there. So very good play from Owe, you know, creates a pressure on a play that ended up getting an interception. Obviously, he doesn't get the full credit for that interception, but he did do a good job of doing his part. And it kind of just goes to show what, what he can do which is he can you know uh run twist at the very least very well something like this is another example of how he was able to add value to his team and right now he's barely on the screen right now in fact this is going to be kind of a very weird start to the play but you'll see exactly what's happening in just a second right when this play begins you see how he kind of steps back and he's going to be essentially a spy on this play he's if Mahomes is going to run, then he wants to get, be able to get over and tackle Mahomes. That's the goal on this play. He is not just being a pure edge rusher to run up and try to beat a tackle. And as you see, when Mahomes scrambles, he does a good job of being able to, you know, help make the tackle. And actually, again, this resulted in an in interception. So it's not like every time he ever makes a good play, it results in interceptions, obviously. That's just, you know, how, the way that these two plays broke down. But still, a very good play. And this is what he is certainly capable of doing. He also can beat tackles one-on-one, -on -one, but... I think kind of the uniqueness of him is probably the more, you know, that's what you, that's kind of the, his bigger selling point, I would say. Also, going on to the running game, that's what I talked about. His running game was very good as a rookie, or just, you know, he was a good run stopping defensive end as a rookie, just in general, like just as a player, where what's going to happen is a right tackle is going to be blocking him one on one on this play, and it's going to be a run to the left side of, sc of the screen. So, in Owe's direction, essentially. Look at how right when this play begins, you see how the tackle does a good job, I think, of you know getting his hand placement the way he wants, but I think Owe does a good job in his own right of making sure he keeps the leverage to the outside, so if the halfback does decide that he wants to bounce things to the outside, then he will be able to get over and make a tackle. Meanwhile, if Edward Zilaire, who is the halfback on this play, decides to run up the middle, uh, you know, Owe just trusts that one of his teammates will be able to go over and make the play, which they would be able to do. As you see, Edwards E. Lair does kind of try to get to the outside, but there's just no room there, largely due to Owe being able to put himself in good position. He is a good run stopper. I think that that's fair to say, and it's not only in plays like this. We also have something like this, where plays like this, I think a lot of people might view this as something where it's not really that impressive. It's kind of more of a uh, you know, a fluky thing. So basically what's happening here is that, you know, you can't block everybody, 
right? And if you can't block everybody, that means that someone has to be unblocked. And there's several ways you could do it. You could leave a, you know, a linebacker unblocked is a way that, you know, you'll see teams do this. But a lot of times what you will also do is just leave an edge rusher unblocked. You leave the edge rusher, in this case, away, who I've circled in yellow, unblocked, and then everyone else blocks sort of to the left side of the screen. So to the offense is right, and then the run is going to be to the right. And because of this, you hope that your halfback can just outrun Owe. But let's keep in mind, one of the things that Owe is very good at is he's explosive. He can get up to a top speed quickly, which is why that, quite frankly, this isn't just one isolated play. This is the real thing that happened. Which, which is that, you know, when teams would leave him unblocked, he would find ways to impact the play. and almost makes you think that it's probably a better idea to run these plays towards Owe instead of against him because he can get over. Watch what happens. As you see, right, when this play begins. So first things to, you know, worth noting is that uh, there was pressure up the middle, which is going to have to happen. Like if this is well blocked on the other side, then Owe is just not going to get into the play. That That's how it works. But because there's a bit of a, you know, not a clear running lane right up the middle, this is what can allow Owe, that little bit can allow him to make a good play of his own. And this is why, you know, especially run defense is such a team sport. Being able to stop the run, you have to have a lot of guys doing their job. And as you see, Owe does in fact get over and he makes the tackle. So again, fantastic play from uh, Odafe Owe. And he really did this consistently. This was a common thing that he would do when teams would leave him unblocked. He would find ways to make a tackle, which is Definitely a good thing because a lot of times when you're left unblocked, you you know, you have no idea. You, there's not really much you can control. Well, he controlled, but he could there, certainly. So, yeah, very interesting player in Odafe Owe. Uh, I think one thing you could maybe argue is like, okay, he was a perfect fit for that scheme last year, but are the Ravens st still going to do that this year? Probably not. It seems like they want to change things up a little bit. They fired uh, their defensive coordinator. So, because of that, maybe we will see a bit of a shift in how will that work for Owe. I think it'll still work all right. Because again, it's not like, you know, even the blandest defenses still have guys running stunts and things like that. So you're still going to be able to, you know, have impacts in several different ways. Even bland defenses are going to have guys be quarterback spies, which he can do. And, you know, he can also just win on the outside. He can win against tackles relatively consistently so it's not like he has to be used in unique ways to have success but just that his skill set allows him to do that stuff very well I think so because of that I do think that he is someone who I am very fascinated in seeing where his, his career goes and the Ravens have a lot of rookies coming into town with the way that their draft went last week so should be very fascinating to see how that goes but yeah uh, that's kind of what I think about Owe. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Odafe Owe and what he will bring to this uh, Baltimore Ravens? I guess not what he will bring to the Baltimore Ravens, but what he will do with the Baltimore Ravens in his second year. Will he have a sophomore jump perhaps next year? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.